Mm. Bonjour and welcome to another episode. Today we have another manufacturer that has put another one of its models to the electric sword. Ladies and gentlemen, the car that once had the derriere of the year has been reincarnated for its fifth generation as an all electric vehicle. And here it is, the all new Renault Megane E-Tech. The Megane has been available in a three and a five door hatchback, as well as a saloon, coupe, cabriolet, and an estate through its lifetime. If you're old enough, you'll remember that the Megane has been available since the early noughties. And if you're a tad bit older, you'll know that it's the predecessor to the Renault 19. Not only were Renaults a car that I saw a lot growing up as they were built in Turkey, but we also owned one. Anyway, enough of that trip down memory lane. Let's talk about the new Megane E-Tech. Headline figures include a 220 brake horsepower electric motor, which means that it can vava boom all the way to 62 mile an hour in just 7.5 seconds. Renault claimed that it can do up to 280 miles on a full charge and its ability to charge up to 130 kilowatts per hour across the whole lineup comes as standard. The entry model is the Equi Equilibre. 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 The Renault Megane E-Tech Equilibre. Which is available for just under £37,000. And that can stretch all the way up to £42,000 for the range topping iconic. As government grants are fluid and they can change very drastically, all the figures stated in this video are just the list price before any discounts that may or may not be available at the time that you decide to purchase. Regardless, 37 to 42,000 pounds is still a lot of money. But is it any good value for money? Well, we are still very much in the new technology, therefore it's expensive stage when it comes to electric cars. I mean, in all honesty, all new cars have seen a significant price hike of late, but for the purpose of this video, let's just stick to EV. Take the equivalent at a prestigious brands like Mercedes-Benz, the entry-level EQA. That'll set you back 43 and a half thousand pounds. Or the equivalent at VW, in the form of the ID3, 39 and a half thousand pounds. Or the Kia Nero, 37 thousand pounds. So, two observations there. A, it's right up there amongst some very stiff competition amongst EV cars. And B, none of these cars are really what you would call cheap. With the emergence of the likes of BYD and NIO from China, does the new Renault Megane offer enough to stop potential customers looking at made in China alternatives? Let's start with equipment. As we discussed, this is the Equilibre. 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 This is the entry level car, but let's take something a little bit more mid range spec, for example, in the form of the Techno. Some of the standard equipment include adaptive cruise control, adaptive LED headlights, lane centering, parking sensors with reversing camera, heated seats, and 20 inch alloy wheels, which to me really isn't a bad start at all because take, for example, 20 inch wheels and the heated steering wheel. Mercedes don't even offer that as an option on the EQA. Next on the list, let's talk a little bit about the styling. One thing about French design when it comes to cars is that for one reason or another, it tends to cause a stir. Sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong reasons, but it definitely is very bold when it comes to design. I, for one, really like the way this car looks. It's very sleek, it's very stylish, it's very minimalistic, very futuristic, and to be honest, it looks like more of a German car than it does a French. I love the fact that you can get 20 inch alloy wheels for a car that's no bigger than a, a Golf or an A-Class. That's absurd. This one doesn't have the 20 inch wheels, but even with the smaller wheels, I really like the side profile. I like the fact that the belt line is really high up and the rear door handles are hidden in the window. Kind of reminds me of something that I've seen quite recently, actually. Hey. And that's not all. There's a lot to like in the new Megane E-Tech, even stuff that Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso would enjoy. See, the E-Tech has radars up front, which a lot of cars now offer, and it just basically tells you if you're driving too close to the car in front. Now, the E-Tech Megane doesn't only tell you if you're driving too close to the car in front, 
but it tells you how many seconds you are behind them. 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. If you get too close, it goes red, and then now you're in the 0 0.9 second territory. <laughs> how very Formula One. I like the fact that you've got wireless Apple CarPlay integrated and somewhere to put your phone. Now this one doesn't have a wireless charger, but on the high spec cars, I think that's where the wireless charge pad sits. So nice and snug. More cars need to offer a small housing for your phone, I think. Just having, you know, cubby holes like this isn't enough. I really like that. I like the fact that it's very quiet in here much quieter than I anticipated and I know electric cars are quiet but sometimes they're so quiet that it opens doors for other things to come into the cabin i.e road noise tire noise or oncoming traffic but actually I'm driving a little over 50 miles an hour at the moment and it's really quiet something else that's worth mentioning is actually how comfortable the Megane is. I've got loads of space, I've got loads of leg room down here, I've got a bit of storage to put all your bits and bobs in. The infotainment screen is biased towards the driver and is a nice arm's length away. The instrument cluster here, although there isn't a lot of information like you get in the Mercedes A-Class for example, it's very neat and tidy and actually not having lots of information can be a good thing as it's less distracting. I like the shape of the steering wheel and the way it feels. You've got paddle shifts just behind here. As it's an electric car, obviously it doesn't have a gearbox, so these are used for recuperation. And it's something that I experienced properly first time in an Audi Q4, which if you haven't seen the video today, I'll link that just up here. It basically enables you to drive the car with a single pedal. So what I mean is, under normal circumstances, when you take your foot off the accelerator, there's a bit of recuperation going on. And the way it's able to do that is basically think of it as it adds friction to the wheels, thus slowing it down and putting energy back into the battery. With this, if you click the left-hand side all the way up, so you get three little arrows into the battery just down here. And this is recuperation in its strongest form. So what this means is that if the traffic ahead is slowing down, all I really need to do is take my foot off the accelerator and you can feel the car instantly braking. In fact, there's a little infographic just down here telling you when your brakes are applied so you know exactly what's going on. And a further benefit is that you can really prolong the life of your brake pads and your brake discs because you could just drive it in this mode all the time. You get engine braking, if you like, and it also uses that energy to put power back into the battery. So it does everything bar come to a complete standstill. So it will drop down to about five miles an hour and if you need to obviously come to a complete stop, that's when you apply the brakes. Once you get used to it, it's actually really useful. I also like the fact that this is the key that you get with the new Megane, if you can see that. Very slim, very sleek. Just literally put it in your pocket, your bag or whatever. So as long as you're in close proximity of the car, when you walk up to it, the door handles pop out, doors are unlocked. And then once you're done driving, you just simply shut the door, walk away from the car, the door handles retract and the doors are locked. And no, that isn't brand new technology, but the fact that Renault have implemented that in the new Megane E-Tech, I approve. Right, enough of the good stuff. Anything, I don't like about the new McGann. Yeah, just a few. Look, I get it, it's a Renault, but when you're flirting with 40,000 pounds, I just think that could probably just do with being a little bit nicer. I was fully prepared to go to war with this infotainment system because I was listening to music earlier and I was just trying to adjust the volume and it's got that touch sensitive stuff here in the corner and I really felt that I needed to first anchor my hand down and then adjust my volume and I thought there's got to be a better way and then I found the plus and the minus on the steering wheel and I thought oh that must be it but no that ended up controlling the cruise control and the speed limiter and then I saw that on this side there are arrows but that controls the screen up here I was like how, how could you not put a volume dial somewhere and then I found this down here and although that works fine, I just feel that this area is a little bit congested. There's just, there's a lot going on. You've got the gear lever, which is taken straight off the Mercedes, and then you've got your windscreen wipers and your rear window wiper and all those commands. And then you've got this additional stalk, which basically controls all the media stuff. It's just, there's just too much going on here. Another thing, the squirters are built into the windscreen wipers, which is a nice touch. I like that, except that when you wash them, water just starts 
running all down here. There's a small whirlpool going on just there. Next up, I wanted to talk to you about the steering because when you're driving at slow speeds in and around traffic in town or slower B roads, the steering is light and sharp, which is good. You want to be able to just point and shoot. However, once you pick up a bit of speed, so for example, we're on a dual carriageway, you think that the ratio, if you like, would just slow down a little bit, but it doesn't. It makes it, you have to really pay attention to the road. I had a bit of a sneezing fit earlier because I suffer from hay fever and the car told me to like watch the road. It gave me a warning because I was probably just a bit jittery on the road. And I think that is the best way to describe it. It's just a bit jittery. The smallest little input has an impact on what happens and at high speed you really want that to slow down a lot of cars that i've driven have speed sensitive steering and it, it feels like in the megan it doesn't quite adjust to the road speed again something that might need a bit of getting used to guys if you have found this video useful or enjoyed it please consider subscribing give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to share just leave a comment down below and i'll uh, endeavor to answer them all and a massive thanks to Renault in enfield for loaning us this megan e-tech so if you guys want to arrange a test drive have any questions just make sure you hit them up i'll leave their website and their phone number down below in the description box from a practicality point of view, I think the Megane E-Tech does really well. It's spacious, there's lots of little pockets of space where you can put things. The boot is half decent as well. We were able to fit in a week's worth of shopping as well as my camera bag with room to spare. What can I tell you about the range other than the range is, well, the range. As we know with all EV cars, they're not really achieving what they claim they can achieve. When I collected this car, it was charged to 100% and it had about 200 mile range, some 80 miles short of the claim numbers. And to be honest with you, that doesn't surprise me because it's nothing new. Combustion engines claim that, it, that they can do X amount of miles to the gallon, but in the real world, we know they achieve nowhere near those numbers. And you know what? I've made my peace with it. I get it. It's a bit of a marketing tool in the same way Red Bull doesn't actually give you wings. Let's move on. So does that all equate to a near as makes no difference, a £40,000 price tag for a Renault Megane? Well, in reality, no, because it's very rare. And I'll go as far as to say it'll be less than 1% of Megane customers that will actually go and spend the £40,000 on one of these. In reality, it's X amount of deposit and X amount of pounds per month over X amount of months based on X amount of miles. Chances are that majority of us would be looking to lease one of these. And then it's all just down to how much is it gonna cost us per month. So if you are in the market for a small little electric car, something with a little bit of je ne sais quoi, then yeah, hit the guys up at Enfield, arrange a test drive see what you guys think for a car that operates essentially at the cheaper end of the ev market there's enough to like about the renault again my only concern is that once byd neo and even the new smart ev hit the market the megan e-tech is really going to have its work cut out i guess only time will tell and on that note merci beaucoup for watching i'll see you guys in the next one au revoir Man, I really butcher that French language, eh?